Hey guys, Dave from Nerdarchy, four nerds by nerds, hanging out with these nerds. Nate the Nerdark. Nerdark is Ted. Hey guys, I know we're not playing an MMO, but we're going to show you how to build a DPS with Dungeons and Dragons. Hey guys, jump down to the description below where you can sign up for Nerdarchy the newsletter, get weekly gaming tips, as well as learn how to game with Nerdarchy. All right, so we're going back and digging into another character build. This time we're going to work out some DPS. Although it's more like DPA, but you know, how are you going to do? <laughs> so there's, there's a number of different things that can factor into dealing damage, but we're looking at making the hardest hitting character, you know, right, right out of the gate. And consistently too, not really relying so much on conditions. Right. Now, if you look at conditions and you want to, oh, well, I'm going to go rogue assassin. I've got, you know, 10 die 6 sneak attack. And if I can get ample, you know, proper situations, I can, you know, obliterate this thing and with get that, that crit. And get that first crit off. Right. This requires you to have the surprise, requires you to, them to not have acted and all the, all the other things. And that works out really great. And you do a lot, a lot of damage. Right. But we have some other things that we're looking at. And, you know, if it's more than one shot and, and a, it's a protracted battle, we're going to hit hard, hard consistently over and over again. Right. Yeah, regardless of condition. You could just be like, someone's attacking you, pick up your sword, and bam. What, what do we have to look at here, gentlemen? Well, you know, first thing we, we went and said, well, who's, who's the hardest hitter if we're taking out the rogue? So everyone, well, lots of people, I should say, believe that the Paladin is the hardest hitting class within 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons. So we should start there. I agree. That sounds like a good place. So what are we looking to get out of Paladin as, as, as our core? Well, everyone knows they can smite, mm -hmm. and, and they can sacrifice spell levels to do that. But they can also cast, their spite, their, their, cast spells that do a smiting effect. So Paladin Smite... Caps out at five die eight, which honestly means we only need fourth level spell slots. So anything beyond that is just kind of well. What are we doing with it? Right, icing icing on the cake, if you would. Right, icing on the smite. <laughs> <laughs> so, so so from Paladin, like you said, we get smite. We're going to get we're going to get a um, fighting style, which is going to factor in. We get access to smite spells, which is another thing, and we're going to get some spell levels from it. But we don't have enough spell levels, you know, with Paladin, unless we go up pretty high. We'd have to go, you know, what was it 13th level to be able to actually get to our our single fourth level spell slot. I'm certain there's better use of our levels if we're looking at just pouring on extra damage. So, what level do you think we should go to in Paladin? Well, if we went to fifth level, we'd be able to get that extra attack and have access to a couple of spells. Or a couple levels worth of, of spells to play with. Okay, so from Paladin, we're saying we're going to get 5 day 8, and we're also going to have access to smite spells, but we're not high enough level yet to really do everything get. we want to do. Okay. So how do we get those? How do we get a, a, our spell levels up so that we can cast those higher level spells to really smite hard? Well, we could go with any of the spellcasters that's full spellcasters, and I would suggest Cleric. And if we went with Cleric... Uh, particularly war cleric, we've got it. We've got a thing that's geared towards fighting, and maybe not so much getting extra damage, but there are a number of things that that do add to it. And if we take it to eighth level, we do get that once around ability of adding an extra d8 of the type of damage we do. Right. So right there, we we've got another d8. We're going to. Eight levels of spells. Eight levels of spells. So we definitely have fourth level spells now. So we're 5d8. We've got at least 6d8 on the table that we can play with at this point between the cleric special ability, between smiting. but And we also, you know, we're also a 10th level caster. So what is that? Is that fifth level spells? Yes, it is. So we can even go beyond. So with that, we should, we should drop back to Paladin again and the Paladin spell list. Because we can take Branding Smite, which uh -huh. is a second level spell. Yep. It adds two, 2d6 of damage, but it's pumpable. So every level you add of Branding Smite adds a d6 to the damage. And since it's not restricted like the regular smiting damage is, you can take that all the way up to... Right now, we have a fifth level slot to use. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that, that will give us, um, what is that, 5d6? Mm -hmm. That'll give us 5d6, and we are also at 6d8. Nice. Well, what if we went into, you know, we're talking about hitting harder. 
uh, Rangers, if you go Colossus Slayer, that gets you, or go with Hunter to take Colossus Slayer, wants a round that's going to allow you to do another D8. As long as they're injured. As long as they're injured. So there is a little bit of a, uh, there is a little bit of a prereq. So, so you might have to smack them once before you really smack them. <laughs> but that extra D8 is going to, uh, that's going to bump up our D8. So we were at six. Now we're at 78 and we're at uh, 5d6. We haven't even figured in the weapon damage yet. <laughs> no. And Ranger will also add spell levels if we take them, you know, even mounted levels. So that's actually going to get us bumped up to a six level spell slot. Yeah. Oh, so our D, so now we have another D6 to play with if we use that higher slot. So that's 66 and 78. Is that where we're at? That's a lot of dice. Plus, if we fight with a great sword, that'll that'll go up to 8d6. Yeah, so 86, 78, and you know, again, we can reroll those ones and twos if we take great weapon fighter. Even better. But wait, wait, there's more. So looks like if my if our math is correct, we've got about three levels left to play with. What if we went battle master? I'm loving the battle master. Extra D8s that you can use anytime. Action surge that you can use once per short rest. Those D8s come back on a short rest too, making them even better. I mean, we only get four of them. But we can use one of them to make that 8d8 as well as 8d6. So that's hitting pretty freaking hard. Yeah, that, and, that, that is indeed. And we'll also get an, an extra bonus effect added to that as well as with the damage. Yeah, yeah. Whether it's you know, conditional tripping or whatever, goading, something. Right. Something that's going to do more damage and make them do something. Uh, so that's all excellent. That's all great. But I think there's more too. We still have to look at feats. So first and foremost, if we're fighting with a great sword, if we go with Great Weapon Master, that's going to pair nicely with the War Cleric's Channel Divinity ability. So you would be able to, yeah, I'm going to take a minus five to hit to do a plus ten to damage, which if we're looking at hitting hard, that's a great way to do it. But if I channel Divinity on my attack, I can get a plus 10 to hit. So I'm actually getting a plus 5 to hit and a plus 10 to damage. So you're going to get a plus 10 to damage. Let's face it, we're going 20 levels. We're going to max out strength. We have a 20 strength. That's a plus 15 to damage. Plus 16 dice. Plus 16 <laughs> dice. That's a lot of dice. Now with this build, build, there's a little bit of a problem because you have diminishing returns every round. You know, you take away like two dice, I believe. And, you know, until you until you kind of run it, until you run out of those fifth and sixth level spell slots. But in the meantime, you know, if you ever get to the point where you run out of spell slots and it's not dead yet, I don't think damage is the answer to your problem. Well, the 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 first three hits that you're doing, you're you're using a sixth and a fourth, two fifths and two fourths. Though those hit hard, and you know, should hopefully. Convince what you're fighting to not fight you anymore. Or die. It should convince <laughs> us to die. <laughs> and should that not work after those first three rounds, yes. you know, then you, you drop off, you know, most of your D6s because you're not brandishing smite anymore and you're down to smiting with third level spell slots. But on the plus side, I wanted to clarify because you said rounds and, um, t and hits. So it's the first strike on every round. You can add all these. Dice. Yes. But you can smite. You can smite with your paladin ability on the secondary attack that you get as a paladin, and the bonus attack that you get as a war cleric. So you can really burn through all your spells pretty quick. <laughs> well, not only that, and you can also use either hex or hunter's mark as well to garner another die six per attack. Now that one's pretty nice. Ha having access to both ranger uh, and paladin of vengeance, you would get both of those spells as options, and those things are going to last. So now the, the the other honorable mentions are uh, Savage Attacker. If you just want to reroll bigger dice pools, yep, which is huge. Uh, also, if you want to take Martial Adept, that'll give you some more maneuvers to play with and another die to play with. Not bad as well. And considering you know that comes back every short rest, I think it's a pretty good investment. Absolutely. Now we also had discussed honorable mention as well as kind of a an, another build that would be. That would work with, you know, again, using the Paladin, and this time we're going to use the Rogue. So if we go Paladin Rogue, you could really maximize your uh, your Rogue abilities here, getting getting that, that sneak attack off. And if you actually went Arcane Trickster as opposed to 
uh, assassin, you'd wind up getting extra spell slots that would combine with Paladin so that you'd have access to more smiting abilities. Uh, so if you did like a 17-3 of a, of a split, you can get some pretty nice damage dice there for a little while. And then also you would take the Duelist style, you'd fight with a Rapier. Uh, you know, you definitely would have to change some things up, but it would still be pretty effective. You would get a lot of use out of those two levels of Paladin. And also with this build, there is there is something you can do that's a little bit cheesy. It actually works for both. Mm -hmm. If you want to get if you want to get advantage on all your attacks, um, you you could basically you either use Find Familiar or Find Steed, and you can have your Steed or your Familiar use the help action in order to assist you while you're in combat, making sure you get advantage on all your attacks. Indeed. Although anything that's going to be able to withstand this amount of damage, they're probably going to chew those things up <laughs> and spit them out <laughs> relatively <laughs> quick, especially if you're annoying your DM with them. And for that, you can always use your Valve Enmity ability that gains you advantage against the target. From your but that is going to use your bonus action, which means if you're doing that, you're not going to be able to cast Brandishing Smite or Brandishing yeah. Smite. So that that kind of diminishes first round, but gives you a lot more access. Oh well, if you do the, if you're interested in getting that sneak attack in, and they mash your familiar the first round, <laughs> <laughs> you can always jump start the the uh, the uh, advantage attacks by doing that. Yeah, with this build, you're never going to be lacking for something to do with your bonus action. You're going to be able to play out plenty of damage. This, if we're speaking in MMO terms, this was probably one of the ultimate uh, DPSs. Mm -hmm. Now, I know a lot of people are going to be like, assassin, assassin, assassin. But literally, that's once a fight, you know, if you can get it off. Some monsters you can't even get it off on. They're not going to be surprised. Maybe they're really good at initiative. This is pretty consistent as far as you're going to be able to do this. Because this does not rely on, you know, you going first and you going before them. Circumstances. You, yeah. yeah the, this, it's a lot of conditional with the assassin. You know, literally, literally, the Paladin Ranger Cleric Fighter literally just relies on a single D8 that they've already been hurt. Yeah, they're, yes, and it's very self-contained. And then you have ways to kind of cheese with your friends if you want, you know, if you want attack, you know, attack, not attacks of opportunity, if you want advantage on your attack rolls. And I found a little thing for Battlemaster. If you choose the Reposet, you can get... It's conditional, but if they attack you, you can attack them back and still get that DA damage, and it's another opportunity to slam them with abilities. And that's using your reaction. Yes, and that uses your reaction, which isn't used pretty much with this build, except, you know, that's the only time to use it. That that could literally be... You could literally be smiting someone uh, four times in a round. Did I say you could touch me? <laughs> <laughs> I mean... You know, if, if you're using your bonus action to attack from War Cleric, if you're using your two attacks and then you use your reaction, that that is a lot of smite damage. That is indeed. I don't know if we had had any smites left at that point that we're falling <laughs> back to using our our bonus our bonus um, well, action you, for an attack. You're but, probably you're probably using your your second and third levels, you know, at that point in time. But it's still a lot of smites. It Again, is. like we said, if it's still around. You've got bigger fish to fry. Yeah, so there is this, this combination will give you a plethora of choices. But the question is, how would you build a DPS in your game? Let us know in the comments below. While you're at it, like, share, and subscribe. You can also check us out over on nerdarchy.com. Or you can support us over on Patreon. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.